Okay, hello dear friends, good morning, such a beautiful, beautiful morning. So let's continue to read the book. I am sorry for the shade, maybe this way will be a little bit better. And um, I do not want to put uh, an umbrella because, uh, because uh, uh, it will be changing the color. So let's start to read. I will put it here so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, this story is about uh, Pygmalion and Galatia. Pygmalion and Galatia. Pygmalion. Okay, this way is a little bit better. Pygmalion was a sculptor, the greatest in all of Greece. He created statues of marble so skillfully formed that it seemed as if they might step down from their pedestals. Pedestals. Some swarm swarm they could see the statue breeze wow the priests of the temple at uh, Paphos came to speak with Pyg Pygmalion they asked him to carve a statue a statue of Aphrodite Pygmalion promised to create a statue worthy of Aphrodite and her temple. Ooh, he's, uh, um, he's painting, he's uh, sculpting the god of love. Hmm? Pygmalion selected a block of pure white marble. Tiny blue veins run through the stone, made it look like human flesh. Pygmalion set to work. He hammered at the stone day and night. He took no time to rest. It was as if the goddess were calling to him from inside the stone, crying to be let out. I will free you, Pygmalion said, hammering away. At last, the statue was finished. Pygmalion put down his tools. He should have been, he should have been happy. Instead, he wept. Uh-oh, he finished something, he cried. Now he would have to summon to priests of Paphos. They would come to carry the statue away. Oh, he need to surrender his statue. Pygmalion could not bear to part with it. It was the most beautiful statue he had ever created. Pygmalion placed a stool in front of the statue. He sat looking at it for hours and hours. So he was just uh, sitting there. There was a stool somewhere. Instead of eating the fig, he sit on the on the table of the uh, on the, the stool of the 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 fig and admiring her statue. The more he looked, the deeper in love he fell. He adored his own creation. Even though she was made of stone, he called her Galatia, as if she she were a living woman. Pygmalion took his paint box. He painted Galatia's lips red and eyes blue. 
Yeah, she finished the lip, not yet touching the eyes. Oh, this is so beautiful. The straight Greek nose. The white marble of her hair became shining gold beneath his brush. Gold hair. <clears throat> now she seemed more lifelike than ever. Pygmalion dressed her in a robe of fine wool. He put rings on her fingers, bracelets around her wrists. He placed a gold necklace around her neck. She, he did all the makeup. He's a, a makeup artist and this uh, is uh, her goddess, Nu Shen. Look at me, speak to me, Pygmalion pleaded. Can't you see that I love you? Galatea's eyes never blinked. Her lips were, her lips never moved. Pygmalion rose to embrace her. His arm closed around hard, cold stone. Pygmalion totally fell in love. Okay, so here is uh, the apricot gem. Let me put uh, on a better light. You can see it. <gasps> Looks so good. Wow. Look at it. And it is so good because um, kind of uh, caramelize, a little bit uh, caramelized and uh, if you take longer time to to um, to cook it there is uh, a much intense and developed flavor I like it <laughs> uh, it's different from just uh, if you see the recipe from the package you can see some of the recipe you boil water and put uh, the fruit in no 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 it's not the same this one is a little bit caramel caramelized oh so good so good uh, this is the lemon curd the priests of Paphos came to pick Mario again where was their statue? What was taking so long? Pygmalion promised that it would be finished soon. Pygmalion found another block of marble. Oh, 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 he cheated. He set to work to create a second statue of Aphrodite. It was beautiful to be sure, but not as beautiful as Galatea. Mm. Oh. The priests of Paphos were pleased. They carried the statue off to their temple. Pygmalion kept his Galatea. What was Pygmalion to do? Galatea was destroying him. He could not eat. He could not sleep. He spent, he spent days and nights staring at the woman he had created. Slowly, he felt himself growing weaker. Pygmalion knew he was dying. <clears throat> he threw himself down his knees before Galatea with the last of his strength, he prayed to Aphrodite. Gracious Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, hear my voice. If Galatea can never be mine, take away my life. Let me find peace in death. Pygmalion stretched out on the floor, waiting to die. Lying there, he felt a gentle hand touch his cheek. 
he looked up and found himself staring into the face of Galatea. She had come down from her pedestal, her face shone with love. Galatea was no longer a statue. She had become a living, breathing human being. Arise, Pygmalion, she said. The goddess has answered your prayers. Your love was so great that it touched my heart. Even though I was made of stone, Aphrodite, give me life so that I may bring life and love to you. Pygmalion and Galatea were soon married. Their love grew even stronger. Their love grew even stronger over the many years that they lived together. When Pygmalion and Galatea died, Aphrodite granted them a final blessing. Their souls left their body at the same time, so they did not have to live even one moment apart. Oh, Pygmalion and Galatea. What a beautiful story, a love story. Thank you very, very much. I can see the neighbor has come. Maybe you, uh, I can hear the neighboring uh, sound. Maybe it's time for us to stop. I love you. I really do. Do, 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 do. Bye bye, friend. Okay, hello dear friends. So here is an ad for my podcast. So I have a, a, a podcast with stories, with blah, blah, blah. If you are interested, go to my uh, podcast to listen to these stories. And uh, they are under the description of this video. Thank you.